What's up, guys? Nolan King from MMA Junkie here inside the Bellator Fight Sphere. If you guys couldn't tell where I am, I know it looks like a normal hotel room, but it is the Bellator Fight Sphere. Um, anyways, just want to announce that, that I will be taking the reins on the MMA Junkie mailbag going forward. We rotated a bunch of people through, and I think everybody did a great job, but we figured it uh, might be a little bit better for everyone, so to speak, if uh, you guys get familiarized with a familiar face that you see every week on the MMA Junkie mailbag. Unfortunately for you guys, it's my face, but I look forward to answering a lot of your great questions. You guys have been great so far, so keep it up. Let's dive into it. First question comes from my guy, Michael Fidel. If due to COVID-19 or other considerations, a contender series offshoot were to take place internationally, which region has the most impressive pool of up and coming fighters that you would like to see compete in the ultimate job interview? This one's easy for me, man. I've, I've said it for a long time, and I think we're starting to see it now. Russia would be phenomenal for this for this type of role. That The types of fighters they have over there, I think, largely have not been signed to the UFC because they don't necessarily translate as well. I mean, people see a, a lot of different names that maybe look unfamiliar. They kind of blend together. And the North American audience would rather have a flashy, memorable uh, you know, fighter from, from England or Brazil or, or North America that, that kind of has... Uh, maybe a little bit of the more cultural similarities, so to speak, than maybe some of these these Russian fighters who don't speak English and don't translate to the, the to the North American audiences. So I think Russia would be perfect for it. They have really top tier talent, guys that are easily UFC caliber, guys that some guys that could probably be in, even in the top you know 20 or 15 of the UFC. So that would be my pick. Might be a little bit more challenging. It's not something I think the UFC's ever looked into as compared to the Contender Series Brazil or the Contender Series uh, Asia that was supposed to go on. So that would be my pick if I had one. I would say Russia, man. Question number two comes from my man Kyle Volkman who says, we've seen a lot of UFC debuts in the post-COVID UFC era. In your opinion, who are a few names that stand out to you as having had notable UFC debuts in the past few months? Who has the highest ceiling? So yeah, Kyle's totally right. We've seen a lot of debuts, especially recently. If you look at the last month or so, um, it looks like the UFC's opened their doors, so to speak, to the roster after trying to trim it for much of the pre-pandemic pandemic era. The COVID uh, you know, pandemic has forced them to make a lot of short notice signings, some, some sure things, guys they know will show up or be able to get to events on time. So with all that said, Christian Aguilera, Munir Lezez, um, Justin Janes, Modestus Buskowskis, those guys all had really impressive debuts, but the four fighters I would say have the highest potential ceiling. Amir Albazi is number one. He put out Malcolm Gordon, a really tough guy I don't think a lot of people are, are very aware of. Exciting flyweight, finisher. He's been doing this for 10 years and he's only 25. He's been a pro since he's 15. So that's number one. I would say number two is Kamzat Chimaev. Excellent debut, had everyone talking about the second coming Habib. My coworker Farah Hanun says that that's not even his game, that he's got other stuff too. So let's see what he has when he fights again on Saturday against Rice McKee. Number three would be Kay Hansen. She looked phenomenal in her debut. She's one of the youngest fighters on the UFC roster, the second youngest behind Chase Cooper, or excuse me, behind Chase Hooper, excuse me. And she looked great. So that would be my third pick. And then last but not least, who can forget? Yuri Prochaska looked phenomenal in his debut against Volkan Uzdemir. That's a guy that, that could be a superstar. The way he fights, the intrigue, the automatic aura that he has when he does all that weird stuff. And for him to back it up, take some damage from a really hard hitter, and put a guy away that's really tough to finish, can't write it much better than that. My final question comes from another homie of mine, David Kratchik. What's up, DAK316? He says, will UFC ever pipe in crowd noise? Good question. We've seen other sports do it. We've seen the MLB do it. And while... For me, I was expecting that the crowd noise piped in to be very horrible, just terrible, like totally phony. And I think it's only half phony. It's still goofy. I don't like it. I do not see UFC President Dana White liking it. I just don't see it as something that he would approve of. My guess is he would rather go off of the, the idea of, hey, listen to these noises. Listen to the, the strikes that we hear. Listen to the leg kicks. Listen to the knockouts in this, this you know, empty arena where you can hear the corners yelling instructions and Michael Bisping screams and you can hear it. So I don't think it really fits what the UFC is trying to do right now. Um, you know, for other sports, they're, they're trying to 
uh, you know, try different things and, and experiment. I don't think the UFC is interested in doing it that way. So I'm going to say that we never hear crowd noise pumped into a UFC stadium until it comes out of the actual mouths of fans sitting in those seats.